What is up everyone? Enjoying a beautiful day out here. Here in the Valley of the Sun. Um, fuck, I gotta make a video. It's supposed to be a hate week video for the Seattle Seahawks, but hold on, let's... If you guys saw the title and thought that your boy Danny was gonna make a video talking a bunch of shit to the Seahawks fans, talking about how Mick Mullins is gonna go up in there into uh, the 12th man century link field or whatever the fuck it's called now, um, the stadium that we have can never fucking win at ever. I'm pretty sure I've only seen us win there one time in 2011. I believe that's the only time I've ever fucking seen the Niners win a game in that stadium formerly known as Quest Field formerly known as the stadium that any NFL team probably wishes they had that home field advantage you know the Broncos and the Chiefs may they might not but any other NFL team wishes they had that home field advantage I mean so um do I think that we're gonna go in there with either Nick Mullins or CJ Beathard honestly I'd want as much as I love Nick Mullins this year, and as much as I would prefer him to be the starter the rest of the year, I'd say put CJ in this game just to save the embarrassment off Nick Mullins. <laughs> because, you know, I I want Nick Mullins to still have, like, somewhat good stats. I mean, last two games, you know, he may have thrown some, some picks, but, you know, I'm worried to, as to what his statistics would be after this fucking game if he starts it. So just... I mean, CJ Beathard, let's see what he can do against some, I know, and then start Mullins the rest of the year, fuck, I don't, uh, what do I say this week, uh, Pete's Carol's Gum, Megan, you're super hot, you are super hot, you know, um, you're, you're hot, you're probably one of the most hottest chicks in this entire TTC, and that's a compliment, you're, you're really beautiful, um, you, let's see, we had Rachel Loves Her Boys years ago, there was a Cowboys fan, we had XO Ravens XO, we had, uh, the 1852, we had Nicole PT. Six, um, we had, uh, oh, Philadelphia, oh, yeah, we had her, yeah, I don't know if she's still around, but, I mean, if there's some TCC award for, like, the best-looking female video maker, you might get it, I don't, I don't know, um, so, congrats to your future award if you get it there, uh, Megan, a.k.a. Pete's Girls Gum, uh, in all seriousness, so, well, uh, your, your video to, to Halen was, was good, um, I really did enjoy that, that was good, I'm glad that even someone like you, who obviously was not around throughout the TTC when Halen was making videos like I was, you, know, you still show the respect that he deserves, so um, props to that. Shout out to Seahawk Brasinio, saw he made a video this week, I'll check it out a little bit later. Um, but you know, you might think me living, being a Niner fan living here in Arizona that uh, the Arizona Cardinals would be my most hated team, but no, the fucking Seahawks are my most hated team because... We can never win in that damn stadium. Ugh. Like, yeah, I, I'm gonna be honest. I do not see us winning this game. If I have not already made that clear, I do not see us going into this, going into CenturyLink Field and winning this game. Um, so we can be happy. We'll probably still get the number one pick. Cause I honestly don't see us winning a game, the remainder of the year. I mean, the Broncos, even though they're playing well, I mean, maybe that's, that'll be a game that will somehow sneak a win up. Um. <laughs> you know, I have more confidence that we might beat you when we play you at home, possibly, but uh, I don't I don't even know if that's realistic. I mean, the main thing I'm mad about is both of the games I went to, the game here in Arizona and the Giants game a couple weeks ago, which I had a great time, of course, at my first um, ever home game at Levi's Stadium. I, I love Levi's. I mean, um, going a little off topic there, I mean, I never got to see Candles. I've never been to a game at Candlestick. I used to see it. I saw it up close one time. I, like, drove by it with my mom one time. It was... And that was a nice experience. Same year they tore it down, but Candlestick was historic, an awesome stadium, of course. I was actually reading Eric Burns' book, former MLB player who's now uh, does triathlete triathlons and, and shit. You know, really cool guy. Uh, read his book. He was talking about growing up at Candlestick, or growing up, you know, having Niners season tickets and going to that Steve Young game when he just he ran. He had that like. Fit that like a uh, 80 yard touchdown run or whatever it was. Um, you know, Candlestick is a great historic stadium, but Levi's was good as fuck too. I had a great time at Levi's. It was a good ass stadium, you know. It was, you know, it's it's a modern one, you know, built in you know a good area, Santa Clara, kind of near my old house. You know, obviously doesn't have the home field advantage as this fucking Seahawks stadium does. Um, and but. Just give it some time, and it, it, it'll be up there. It'll be a good stadium. It'll be a good home field advantage for the Niners someday. 
someday. Um, but a couple things I want to get into. A bomb. I liked your video. I agree with almost everything you said in your video except one little thing. Uh, Jim Harbaugh. I don't particularly know why you would want to blame him for Jed York and Trent Balky being idiots. I mean, he was a good coach. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he had a good roster, but as you said, what did Mike Singletary or Mike Nolan do with that? Especially Singletary, because, I mean, he had most of that roster. What did he, like, do? What, what were they able to do? Nothing. Jim Harbaugh actually took this team to three straight NFC Championship games in a Super Bowl appearance, and that's why his firing was the dumbest firing of any head coach, I think, in history. Any sport. It's, I mean, I might have to do some research to really verify that, but... That has got to be the most stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life, is the fact that they would get rid of Jim Harbaugh after no losing seasons. I mean, that's just retarded. I mean, I, I think Shanahan, you know, I don't blame Shanahan at all for this, how bad we're doing this year or last year. I mean, you need you need players on the roster that actually are willing to, that are actually going to produce. You need, I and mean, we have talent on this roster, but we need, you know, we need better talent than this. So I think it's pretty stupid to blame um, Kyle Shanahan or John Lynch. I'm, I, Abe, I'm not even talking to you anymore, of course. I'm just mean in general for anyone that does. I mean, John Lynch especially. I mean, Trent Balky, he was not the best, and he had a lot of a mess that uh, John Lynch is having to clean up. So um, there's that. And, you know, hey, also kind of unrelated, but Trent, I mean, he wasn't that good of a GM, but I think that, you know, he had, even he had a little bit of success, of course, and I also was listening to KMBR uh, a few days ago, and they were talking about, you know, how, like, A.J. Jenkins, for example, a pick that, you know, blaming J or blaming Trent Balky on that. I mean, did you know that, uh, did anyone know how, that A.J. Jenkins wasn't going to work out at all? I mean, in that draft, he looked promising. I mean, that's kind of stupid to just, blame a GM for drafting a player that looked great on paper and just didn't end up turning out well. I mean, that's it'd be like blaming John Lynch for Reuben Foster, and which will be my next transition to what I'm going to talk about next. Um, no, Reuben Foster was the right pick at the time. You know, he had the potential to be Patrick Willis 2.0, and then, of course, he sadly was another Alden Smith off the field. He could end up being worse than Alden Smith if he doesn't get his act together. I mean... Domestic violence is quite a lot worse. Well, actually, I'm not going to... I don't know. I mean, domestic violence, yeah, it's probably still worse than drinking and driving. I'm not condoning drinking and driving under any circumstances, but domestic violence, I think, is... That's a low blow, obviously. I mean, hitting a fucking woman, you know, get the fuck off my football team if you're actually going to do that. Um, but, you know, it's not even whether or not he hit her or whatever. It's the fact that he has this bullshit, you know, his... Ex-girlfriend possibly, you know, making up what happened before and then recounting, recanting it and whether or not it's true if he really did it or not. It does not matter. You know, Ruben letting himself be in this situation again in the first place means that you got to get off this team. And the Redskins, of course, signed him yesterday, so they're going to get a lot of shit for that. But, you know, for people who say that this organization, you know, doesn't have class, you know, they did stick to their word, we did stick to our word that we would get him the fuck off this team if he were to do anything like that again, and we sure as, we sure as hell did, so, we made the right move, um, you know, I mean, Ruben wasn't, I mean, he was, he was playing alright last, you know, last year, you know, he's kind of injured this year, but he didn't, he was not, I don't think he was nearly as promising as he had the potential to be, so, yeah, this, this week, I'm going to be honest, I do not see us being the Seahawks, and that's all I got. Danny G SFG TV is out. Peace.